Hey. hey. Oh. Hey. I you did it. I joined you on the hey. I liked it. I was trying to figure out what haven't we done. Yeah. We haven't both said hey at the same time. And you know how this evolved? Do you remember why I have to do it different ways? I don't remember why. Because initially it was just louder and louder and louder and louder. <laughs> yeah. And I think I, I I realized early enough that, oh, that's, first, there's only so much I can do there. And that's going to get unpleasant. Because <laughs> the first, like, six or seven episodes of our show are me going, hey, <laughs> just... <laughs> it really is a rude awakening yes also that was six episodes this is episode 57 yeah can you even imagine i'd i'd have a megaphone or something <laughs> you'd have a, a human centipede of megaphones <laughs> yeah <laughs> yep and one of them would be a butthole that's right that's right <laughs> this is episode 57 of Alex and Jim analyze Billy Joel lyrics. It's my favorite number. Is it? I think so. I think it is yeah. my favorite number. And pourquoi? No good reason. It's I... very angular. <laughs> it's got a lot of <laughs> points on it. <laughs> That's but a that, really it's spiky. That's actually a better reason than most people's reasons for favorite numbers. Yeah. Because most people's reasons for favorite numbers are superstition or something. Mary Jo's reason is fine. She likes the number 14 because it's her birthday. And so that's that's a fine reason. That's so a, yeah, That's a little self-involved, but all right. Yeah, so a lot of our anniversaries of stuff are on the 14th because she was like, we're doing that on the 14th. Oh, okay. thinking ahead. Yep. So, so when I get close to the end, I know she's going to kill me on the 14th just to make sure. <laughs> it's like, well, Jim's, Jim's kind of sick. I just got to time this right. <laughs> you got to unplug him on the 13th. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> my birthday is January 8th and my sister, I guess it was close to the 9th, I think. And my sister was really worried that I was going to be born on Nixon's birthday, and she was very happy it was the 8th. <laughs> because I love the idea that uh, when you were an adult, people would remember Nixon's <laughs> Right? <birthday. laughs> oh, no, you you got a 1-9 baby? Oh, <laughs> those are the know. worst. Those, I tell you what, I don't care what they say. Those babies are crooks. <laughs> I was you born rather... Yeah, you were forced to step down as a baby. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> you won't have me to kick around anymore. Well, my dad is. He's got rage issues. <laughs> uh, so instead, I was born on a memorable birthday that people will always remember, which is David Bowie and Elvis Presley. Oh, very nice. Yeah. I think I got like Eddie Fisher. <laughs> that's, oh, yeah. that's fine. That's fine. Yeah. Eddie Fisher did well for himself. You know what I, it's weird about my, I was born March 8th. And my whole life, I've thought, oh, it's spring. I was born in the spring. And then just this year, I looked at the calendar. And I was like, oh, shit, I was born in winter. <laughs> I don't even know how the calendar works. That's fantastic. I think it has to do with growing up in Arizona, where yeah. everything after Groundhog Day is just summer. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um. I have a, a special thing to share with you. <laughs> share away. So last week we talked about the falling of the rain and I always get the lyrics from billyjoel.com. So I figure that's probably the most accurate. You would think. And I didn't realize that there's a comment section to the <laughs> songs. <laughs> Uh, this one woman, and this was four years ago that she said this. There's two comments, so it's not a hot comment <laughs> section. Because I think people realize who's commenting on the lyrics of a specific song and who's imagining that Billy Joel is reading this. Well, this woman, Veronica, thinks that Billy Joel reads these. <laughs> right. 
Ah, uh, Veronica says of the falling of the rain, I love this song, but you sang it too fast. <laughs> it should be a ballad. Wow. And now she apparently is doing for real what we sometimes do for pretend on our show because she goes, can you do it again? But this time, <laughs> sing it slowly and give us time to explore the intricacy of those lives. <laughs> wow. Wow. And, and now that was four years ago. Uh huh. A year ago, Martin noticed Veronica's comment. Uh huh. And he said, uh, Billy didn't sing it too fast. The tape that was used to press the master ran too fa fast. Producer's fault. This is accurate. You set the record straight. So. Do you think Martin is uh, Billy Joel's handle <laughs> on billyjoel.com? Uh, his middle name. Oh, it could be. That would be pretty amazing really great if he just went around <laughs> yelling at people in the comments it's funny to me it's like four years ago she said that martin piped up a year ago so i think we got to look back in in six months that should be the rate roughly six to nine months to see oh yeah yeah what she has to say about that oh blame the producer of course <laughs> Ah, uh, you rock stars are all the same. <laughs> no, he is, it occurs to me, he's an old Jewish man who lives on Long Island, and so he could very well be going around <laughs> reading comments yes. and talking back to people. <laughs> yes, he could. Uh, I just enjoyed that so much that there's this, oh. and commenting on lyrics. Now, did you go read comments on other songs? I haven't yet. That's, Maybe that's supposed to be part of our weekly diet. Yeah, I let's see. Are there any for today's? Nah, nobody felt like talking about this song. <laughs> oh, uh, so just to let you know what we're talking about, because I you might have forgot. Right. The uh, you mean? Yes, I decided that we would stay with the same album because I thought that was interesting, uh -huh. and I picked "Turn Around." Ah, uh, yes. And uh, for sure, this is a very country song. Oh yeah, right uh, there the first line. Yeah, it's a it's the the way the music is set up. It doesn't have. It's like a lot of Billy Joel, where you're like, oh, this could be, you know, this this could be a Broadway song, except they wouldn't use these instruments. Or this could be a 50s song, but it wouldn't be with this kind of a piano. So it just is influenced that way. Yeah. And this is definitely, it feels country without necessarily um, traditional or modern country musicality. But just aspects of the music itself are very country. Do you think uh, it... Hearing it in my head, I'm thinking of John Denver. Yes. Whom I do not think of as a country singer, but a lot of people do. Um, what do you and, think of him as? Do you think of him as a... Uh, I would say like folk. Folk, okay. I, yep, fair enough. But I don't know what, like, how official any of these categories are. <laughs> do you think people remember him? Yes. Okay, that's good. I don't think like a lot of people from that era then pick up a new audience of young people. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, for obvious reasons, he's not exactly touring. Yeah. I don't know that like new generations are discovering him. <laughs> I, so here's a thing that occurred to me about John Denver the other day, other than that he clearly is the father of Oliver on Brady Bunch. <laughs> I always thought that as a kid, I thought that for real. I thought, that's got to be John Denver's kid. Where else would he get those glasses? <laughs> right. Because apparently I thought that the, that haircut is a, uh, is a recessive okay. gene or not a recessive, it's the dominant gene. Um, <laughs> oh, he had a lot of kids in the 70s. 
<laughs> yeah, he sure did. Apparently me at one point, so. <laughs> yeah, you're teetering on the brink. No wonder dad was mad. <laughs> Mom, was, I fucked John Denver. Mom fucked John Denver. Yeah, exactly. But here's what occurred to me, because um, <laughs> thank God I'm a country boy came on the radio, uh, the Spotify. So, so sometimes what I'll do is I'll put a rando song that I enjoy, and I was listening to Forever and Ever Amen uh, by the great Randy Travis, a fantastic song. Yep, one of the greats. Bulletproof that song. His version of uh, uh, The Circle is also, if you feel like crying, his version of The Circle is really good. Okay. Yeah. You know the song, right? Uh, I don't think I do. I, I I'll give it a little bit of, of it to you because I'm sure it's not copyrighted by anybody. Totally unbroken by and by, Lord? Yes, that's it. It's old okay. spiritual. And it's a lovely little song. It was made famous by who? Uh, uh, the Swingin' Medallions. No, I don't know. <laughs> I don't. The June Carter Cash's family. What would they call the, the Carter? The Carter family. Carter family, yeah. Jimmy uh, Carter yeah. sang it. June uh, and the Carters. Yeah. <laughs> they yeah, she sang it, and then they also did a version with Johnny Cash when they got married. Oh, nice. It'll, it'll break your fucking heart. It'll break your heart. Um... While we're on a, a Randy Travis kick, my, my favorite song is Promises. Great song. Help yourself out. Great, great song. I, I like him oh. a lot. He's very, very talented. Anyway, I was listening to that, and Spotify will generate a playlist. Oh, yes. And I like that just because sometimes I'll... I like it because sometimes I'll like... I haven't heard this song in a while. I also like it because I'm like, why does Spotify think this belongs on this list? amuses that, me that is the most fun game because you'll listen to randy travis spotify's choices yeah you'll be listening to it and you're like okay i get it loretta lynn sure why not and then suddenly meatloaf and you'll go okay i don't know <laughs> why meatloaf i like meatloaf so maybe you're right but metrics are you using yeah so thank god i'm a country boy came on by john denver and it occurred to me if you put that song out today, people would make fun of you for trying, for pretending to be a country boy. Yes. It and sounds so phony. Yeah. Like maybe that, you know, that has a lot to do with why I don't think of him as a country singer. Yeah. Although if you listen to modern, <laughs> modern country music, all they do is tell you how country they are. Yeah. And uh, they're, they're all lists of things you'll find in the country. <laughs> all, every song is like a, a scavenger hunt. <laughs> like, you got to find a beer, a dirt road, a girl, preferably, preferably without shoes on. Right um and uh, maybe like a campfire but there's like a list of things and if you come back with all those things then uh your country what's interesting is that's a good list for a country boy but also for a killer well you know <laughs> i think we just solved a few crimes my friend brian he's uh he's uh likes a lot of different kinds of music he likes a lot of country music and for a long time, he was obsessed with that song about how that guy who loves this bar. Because <laughs> he was like, he would just, he had a bit about it. He was like, there's no bar like this. There's, <laughs> there's, you don't walk into a bar with that many different kind of people. And no. if you do, you leave because there's going to be a bar fight. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. We do section off. Yeah, and sometimes for good. People don't need to deal with me. And it, uh, my favorite bar in Tucson had like two categories of people, and it was uh, drug dealers and guys who worked at the post office. <laughs> and it was the most fun and pleasant bar ever. And yeah. I think so, based on that. 
you know, apparently the guys who worked at the postal facility loved cocaine. I would imagine. But also, don't most people? <laughs> For a while. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Unless they like living indoors. Yeah, true, true. Living indoors is great. I, yeah. I love it. I have opted for that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on. Come on, tech. Technical difficulties. There we go. There we I have go. to know, uh, just before we get to the song, what does the rest of your shirt say? Uh, <laughs> is your mine. You're my wow. lucky charm. That's pretty great. Yeah. Um, and that is Snoopy with Woodstock. And they are good friends. <laughs> they really are yeah they get along great i read a little bit of trivia about uh franklin do you remember franklin from the peanuts sure, yeah. mm -hmm. franklin would be the young black boy who lived in their neighborhood somebody wrote charles schultz a letter about how he should have a black kid in the comic strip and he wrote them back and said i don't know it seems it would seem like maybe I'm not the guy to do that because I don't know. It would feel like I don't know that experience. And they wrote back and said, well, but it's good to see. And apparently when people would write Charles Schultz, he would end up being their pen pal for a while. Yeah, I've heard that about him. He would write back and forth. And this was this uh, black school teacher, I believe, who was saying this to him. And at some point, he wrote her a letter and said, well, tell me what you think about Sunday's comic. <laughs> and right. he introduced Franklin. And there is not one single comic strip you will ever see that addresses it. Right. Because it doesn't need to be addressed. That's the best. Yeah. He really is the best. Yeah, he was a good dude. And he, I... I like it was my favorite comic growing up, and I think it's because I have always related well to unrequited love. They're yeah, they're and they're also children and they're without parents. There's yeah. no parents. Yep. Their teacher is a trombone. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I think I, I would have done better being taught by a trombone, that's for sure. Yeah, it feels that way, right? I would have got a higher degree in college for sure. <laughs> but yeah, you're just a lovely man with uh, some really lovely normal flaws. Like Which... our good friend, Billy Joel. Billy Joel, here he comes. So we're talking about Turn Around. I do think it's a very pretty song. It's a very pretty song. I'm afraid it might be lyrically star, but we'll find out. It, yeah, uh, I think that's funny, but <laughs> I like the first <laughs> lyric. Oh, sweet lady, running like a stream. You don't look back because you know hands are clean. You make the believe that the past was just a dream. You make believe the past was just a dream. What a sad lamentation of somebody he, you would like to turn around. I think it's pretty clear what he wants from this person. Sure. I like that. I will give credit for the fact that I'm not confused about what we're saying. I do like the Oh Sweet Lady, and it occurs to me um, it's a little bit uh, that era of the 70s. Like, oh, uh, who wrote, who was, who's the guy who got Sweet Caroline? Who's that singer? Neil Diamond. Uh, Neil it's Diamond. a little lean Neil Diamond. Yeah. Oh, oh Sweet Lady, running like a stream. Man, just like the other song is, we're really heavy on true effort for poetry. Running like a stream. Yeah. You don't look back because you know hands are clean. That's a weird lyric. Hands are clean. All hands are clean? <laughs> hands in general. Now, I'm on a different site, and I have the word your. Oh, well, I'm on BillyJoel.com. What am I on? Lyric find. <laughs> which is they left out a word out of their name <laughs> <laughs> but i have yeah i have your hands are clean maybe well well okay well that's better i don't know if, i don't know which it is because on billyjoel.com 
It's just the general sentiment that hands are clean. <laughs> <laughs> well, I did. It is the seventies because there's a lady. She's a lady. Yeah. There, they became all became girls later. But in the seventies, they were uh, sweet ladies. Yeah. Pretty, pretty ladies. Um, or lay day. Yeah. Sometimes you get a lay day. Yes. Do you, which is better, by the way, girls or ladies? I think ladies is probably better. Ladies, I think, yeah. Maybe Jerry Lewis ruined it. <laughs> <laughs> and nobody can say that word correctly anymore. But lady, uh, lady seems better. Yeah. Um, of course, there's a lot of implications with lady, too, because... She's a lady implies that other ladies aren't ladies because they do things that ladies oh. wouldn't do. There's all that stuff. Well, we kind of have ruined every word because <laughs> we're we're men and we're terrible. Yeah, we yeah. A woman. No, oh, don't call me woman. Yep. Because that's uh, uh, dissociating and demeaning in a way. Yeah. Basically, if we're saying it. It's to me. Yeah, man. just use names. Just use their names. Yeah, maybe as people, we're not good at talking to each other. Yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> probably true. But the past was just a dream. You make believe the past was just a dream. So I think, and then it comes up later, but I immediately thought, so this is somebody who's the the woman is beyond just move past him. It almost seems like this woman is pretending it was a never happened kind of thing. You think that relates to him or her life in general? I feel like it's about her to him. Okay. I think it's her saying whatever it was we had was, uh, it okay. was an illusionary. It wasn't real. Fair enough. And I guess uh, I'll sing the chorus, then you do the next verse. <laughs> And the chorus. So I won't right. sing it. Oh, uh, come on. Turn around. <laughs> <laughs> okay, don't sing it. <laughs> I can't sing the word turn around without going every now and then. I feel a little bit turn around. <laughs> and I will sing for you a song. I don't know where you've been, but you've been gone too long. I will sing for you a song. It's just such a not good lyric. <laughs> yeah, and it sure shows up a lot. Yeah. Um, it would be like if I wrote to you and said, hello, Jim, I am sending you an email. Yeah. You'd be like, yeah, no, I got that when I opened Hotmail yeah. or whatever you use. Yeah. Hotmail is great, too. If you kids want to use Hotmail, do it. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Don't let them tell you. Yeah. <laughs> but I will see. Yeah, you're, you're right. And it's. It also feels like I will sing for you a song is a lyric that was overrepresented already by this time in yeah. songs from the 50s and 40s and 30s, 30s and <laughs> for, for the ever and probably in Shakespearean times. Yeah. So it didn't need. It doesn't it really need. Is. Like, I can't think of anything and a lot of stuff rhymes with song. Yeah. That. That bails me out as a songwriter. Yeah, it's it's like all the like early hip hop. If you listen to early hip hop, a lot of people noticed that rhyme and time. Oh sure. So you'll see that a lot. Because <laughs> and they're right, they're correct that those oh, two man. words. They rhyme like hell. Yeah, if you want to rhyme something, that it's right there, you know, but. Oh. You don't necessarily yeah. need to. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know where yourself. you've been. Huh? I was going to say, don't paint yourself into a corner by saying, like, you know, turn around, turn around, and I will give to you an orange. Right. <laughs> you're fucked. <laughs> That's, I would like that lyric better. <laughs> like, at least it, it puts you in a place. Yep. I'm like, okay, I guess we're in an orange grove. All right. I like that. That's, things smell nice. <laughs> This is like California country. <laughs> but you've been gone too long. I don't know where you've been, but you've been gone too long. And, and they're unreal. I don't understand the but. I don't know where you've been. 
and you've been gone too long. Makes more sense, doesn't it? Yeah. I feel like uh, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know where you've been, but means uh, I don't care where you've been. <laughs> right. What What I'm interested in is um, the fact that you've been gone a long time. Yeah, I don't know where you've been, but you're you're not obliged to tell me. That that'd be a fine lyric. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is going to be a great rewrite. <laughs> uh, I got to talk to Veronica. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she'll she'll set us straight. Oh, Veronica. All right. And like a stream. Yep. That's how she runs. Just like a stream. <laughs> uh, I also feel like a lot of water imagery makes for amateur sounding songs. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, for had, sure. We had it last week. Lots of rain. Now we got a stream <laughs> on Cold Spring Harbor. Well, at least you tried to do something on purpose. I think. Yeah. It just feels like such a, I'm a singer songwriter, so I'm writing a poem to a music. And, and again, first album, we're finding our voice. Yes. Uh, although he is already doling out the advice. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, Eliza. You must begin again. And all the roads that you have walked are coming to an end. I was your lover, but I thought I was your friend. I loved you, but I thought I was your friend. Huh. A couple things. First, it's funny to me that it's Eliza. <laughs> it's very funny. I don't feel like he knew a lot of Eliza's. I am sure as sugar that he <laughs> saw, uh, you know, the musical and when it was on TV or something and it's, and the, he's thinking of Eliza Doolittle for sure. I think he saw, he was watching TV and he wrote that down in his little notebook. I'm like, oh, that's a good name. Yep. Or yeah. <laughs> if, if he made that much effort, it's just probably a subconscious, <laughs> like he saw the damn thing and he wrote. Eliza, I don't know why that's hitting me. Well, it's hitting you because she's getting married in the morning. That's why. Yeah. Oh, I need a name. Uh, let's see. Everybody I know is named Jennifer. Yeah. I can't do that. Yeah. Yeah. He, I bet he was halfway to writing this about Mary Poppins. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Eliza's a funny... For the hidden Mary Poppins references. <laughs> that's what they always say. Yeah. Uh, but again, with the advice, you must begin again. Yeah. All the roads that you have walked are coming to an end. All the, all the things you've been trying to get over me aren't working out, or you're going nowhere fast in this town, Eliza. You need me. You, you need, need me. me. Which is the plot of that jackass in the movie with Eliza Doolittle. True. Give me my yeah. slippers, you know. Yep. Um, I do like uh, I was your lover, but I thought I was your friend. I do too, but what does that mean? I like it as well. You know, it feels very much like the inverse of uh, you know, like our nerdy high school experience, where I was like, well, I was her friend, and I was hoping, <laughs> right, to love her, right. Um, it's very interesting that he's like, oh, I thought we were friends. <laughs> Oh, okay. So it took me a minute, more than a minute, because I've been laboring over this even before we talked, uh, even before we came to air. I looked at this <laughs> lyric, and it and it bothered me. I, I, I was your lover, but I thought I was your friend. Yeah. It just dawns on me what that maybe means is, maybe. He's saying, I was your lover, but I thought we had something deeper. Ah. I thought we would beyond just the sex. I thought I was somebody you could count on and you were somebody I could count on and that, Oh yeah, actually that makes perfect sense. Now that I'm thinking about it that way. Yeah, getting dumped makes sense that I get that. Yeah. Not talking to me at all. Yeah. Like that. Oh, and there's the sucker move. Oh, talk about high school. I'm glad you said high school. 
That's the sucker move of everybody. It was like, can we still be friends? Ugh. Oh, buddy. That's what he's doing. Oh, my God. The worst. <laughs> and Eliza had the decency to go, no. Oh. She's an exceptional person. <laughs> All the people who had the cowardice to go, no, no, we're still friends. We can hang out and I can hurt you some more. <laughs> She's like, no, I think I know what's best for you, young William. Yeah, she's doing a solid. She's not you anymore, stupid. She's like, yeah, first of all, you don't want to be my friend. You want us to still be lovers. Yeah. Let's not kid ourselves here. And if we do hang out, you're going to see me dating people and you're going to be a dick about it. I think Eliza has to be at least a junior. <laughs> <laughs> yes that's right yeah he likes her she gets all the leads in the plays now right and she's blossoming a little bit and it's man she looks a little bit more like a woman and he's still a stupid little boy yep he's still uh stage managing yep and we didn't know this at the time but she's actually dating the gym teacher and that's not okay it's not okay either but you know <laughs> She doesn't, certainly doesn't have time to be her friend. Yeah. She feels mature because she's dating the gym teacher. And then this is a mistake, though. It's Long Island, baby. <laughs> Long <laughs> Island or also everywhere else. Everywhere on Earth. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I learned a lesson when I was waiting tables at a Greek restaurant in Chicago. And uh, there was this really beautiful woman I worked with who was a server there and I had a crush on her but I never even like tried to ask her out I assumed she was dating the most handsome waiter but she wasn't she was dating the manager and I thought ah this is uh, the best looking waiter doesn't even get to date the best looking waitress he has to date the second best looking waitress because the best looking waitress is moving up wow yeah. Yeah. That doesn't apply to all fields or all times, but yeah. it certainly applies in Greek restaurants. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I do like Greek restaurants, though. It's almost always great food. I know. That... Now I want pastizio. I bet she was. Was she nice? It's a nice person. She's really nice, yeah. Well, there you go. That's all that needs. It's to great. Be. Good for her. Yeah. I, I, hopefully they're still together. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The and feeling, happy. Yeah. And yes. Happy first. Happy first. And I hope neither one of them work at that restaurant anymore. That's right. I hope they work at an even better restaurant. <laughs> I hope they open their own place in Mykonos. <laughs> well, shit. I hope that too. Now, would um, you say this a sidebar? Would you say in Mykonos or on Mykonos? And how big does an island have to get before you say in? I'd say you'd say on. Yeah, right? Yeah. And I think as long as you recognize it as an island, it's on. Oh, wait, well, wait a minute. No, yeah, I think so. Because Australia is not an island. It's just <laughs> no. not a very big continent relative right. to other continents. So yeah, as long as it's an island, you're on it. And if it's and it has to be pretty small to go from on to stranded. I might have a rebuttal. A bust. Sicily and Malta. Oh. I would say it was in Malta. Yeah. Or in Sicily. But I was on Kauai. Yeah. Now, are you like to be. are you saying that because of the size, or rather because of the fact that that's that's, what, that's what's foggy about it? That's you know, that's that part of the world, and I'm in that part of the world. Whereas when you're on a Hawaiian island, you're still in the United States, so you're on. You know, so I guess the question would be is if you were from that part of the world and you were on one of those islands, would you say in or on? 
Oh yeah. yeah. I would say um he's out on Long Island, I would say. Yeah. But a lot of people do say they live in Long Island. Yeah. Well, the comment sections is going to be lit. <laughs> what I know. Yep. Turn around, turn around, and I will sing for you a song. Again, there's room here to, to make it a different one this time. Yeah. But I guess if you're in the country genre, you're not allowed to change too much stuff. Now, it does occur to me that I actually have something to add to this, to analyzing the chorus, which is, God, that's desperate. Right. Just suddenly dawns on me how pathetic and desperate it is. And if, and that's fine. I actually think that, we're, I think he's painting a picture of a pathetic, desperate person. We've all been there. It's a relatable feeling and legit topic for a song. Yeah. And so he's like, I, I'll sing you a song. Uh, great. Okay. I don't need a song. I'm dating the manager. You know, it, it reminds me, I've told this story before, so I won't tell the whole story, but, but I wrote poetry for this girl. Oh yeah. And she really liked the poetry up until she didn't. Yeah. Which means she never did. No, she loved the poetry when she liked me. Right. And then I wrote her another poem and there was a point point at which I used to, the joke I used to do when I would bring this up in my act and I don't anymore, but I would say, um, women like it when you write them poetry, you know, how many poems they like two? they like two poems. <laughs> do you know how many poems they don't like 15? Yeah. I don't okay. want to hear 15 poems. And, uh, and there was definitely a, like, there's a, definitely a going back to the well, kind of a feeling of it, which was this worked before. This 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 promoted in you romantic feelings for me, so yep. I will write another poem. Yeah, and this, returns. Yeah, and this is exactly that. I'll sing you a song. You have sung me a song, and and also um, you thought we were friends, and you're writing songs for me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you're we're songs for all your friends. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> really giving away the game. Yeah. You write sad, sappy songs for your friends. You're a weird friend. Cool. Um, yeah, D and D night must be wild. <laughs> <laughs> Before we start. Oh, that's pretty great. And now, again, I just love that her name's Eliza. That's just really funny. <laughs> really oh, funny. sweet lady, stand beside the sea. Maybe you will find a little time to think of me. Ugh. buddy yeah won't you please remember what i tried so hard to be that's uh i don't know if that's self-aware or not but what i tried so hard to be he's this is a man on the verge of realizing he wasn't being honest anyway yes but I don't think that's the intention. I mean, he ain't wrong about trying so hard. Yeah. But re and yeah, remember what I tried so hard to be, or is it self-aware? Is that a moment where our character is recognizing that I was trying to be this thing for you? Isn't it great that I tried? Right. But also he seems to be acknowledging I ain't that thing. Yup, he for sure is, or at least realizing like it, it's not selling. Yeah. And Lord, if you're trying that hard to be that thing, uh, because she needs that thing, whatever it is, if it's, you know, somebody more responsible, some, whatever, it, whatever the thing is, mm -hmm. uh, you might want to let her go because you're not that thing. Yeah. Yeah. And if you're going to be the thing, you should do it for yourself. Yeah. That's a lovely lyric, actually. And I will, I will hope that all of it's self-aware because it seems the sadness is there. Yeah. It's not an accident that this is a bummer. 
<laughs> no, I think that's what he's going for. Stand beside the sea. Maybe you will find a little time to think. I mean, that's nice. I feel like he's letting it go. Yeah. It's, he's past like, oh, well, I thought we were friends. <laughs> I'm just like, well, okay, well, maybe you'll think of me once in a while. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's pretty nice because that is maybe, and I've gotten to that point with old friends and whatever that you don't see anymore and things that fall out of your ears so you can't hear your stuff. I've made peace with Gotta it. Gotta let it go. Gotta let it go, yeah. <laughs> you let you about there is something pretty nice about, well, okay, if it is done, it seems like it's done, it would, I hope that you will take a minute now and then to remember what was good. Yeah, and and can that just be enough? Yeah. The um, and at a distance it can be just uh, you can't be friends. You really can't hang out. We live in an interesting time because when we were growing up, you would just lose track of people because there was no social media. Oh yeah, and some like your friend would move away, and you'd maybe write him a letter once or twice, and then be like, "All right, that's that." Yeah. Now the people don't you like somebody leaves town but they're still everywhere. And you're like Jesus. I don't care about uh, your new dog. Right. Spoken to you in 17 years. I don't care what kind of dog you have. Yeah, not even just social media. You're absolutely right. But also, like I remember as a kid, my sister went to. Um, where did she go? She went to France and then she went to Spain. She did a, like a little sort of search for herself kind of thing in her youth. And we, her family, didn't talk to her very much. We we're close to her, but long distance calls were so expensive. Right. That's another thing. The kids don't know about that. Dude, just calling California from Arizona, there was a price tag. Yeah, man. There's not one at all now. It really changed the nature of conversations back then. Yeah. You had to get to it. And you had to have, if you were going to catch up, you had, you were like, you had set everything else aside. You were like, I'm talking to Janet and we're not doing a second thing because this is costing $700. <laughs> Focus up. Yeah. And Okay, I'll talk. You could talk to Janet. You got two minutes. Because that was what would happen. Is you could say hello to your sister. Hi, Janet. Miss you. Miss you too, Jim. Bye. Because <laughs> other people had the important things to say. You know, you're like, okay, I'm going to give you $15 worth of conversation. And that's it. That's it. And uh, talk to you in a week and a half, two weeks optimistic in my family because i remember when i was a kid because phone calls were not free if i went to so my mom would drop me off if i wanted to go shopping for something like if it was christmas or whatever i was taking yeah. a little amount of money well what i would do is i would call her collect yeah and my and i would call her collect and they'd say will you accept the charges from jimmy and she'd say no <laughs> great and she knew that meant to come pick me up <laughs> did you guys do that trick game in the system yeah man yeah, yeah. Bunch, bunch of hillbillies <laughs> yeah, yeah. when i was in college there was this phone well the college i went to nice there's in the college i went to there was this phone that was broken and what the break the specific thing was you put a quarter in and it would register the quarter but it would pop back out oh fantastic so many long distance calls I made, cling, 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 cling. And when it would say, you, you need, you're running out of time, you need to insert a certain amount of money. I'd go, no problem, cling, cling, cling. It was so great. Oh, that was great. Here's what a big deal that is. That's a memory of mine. I remember it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I could call home and I'd be like, okay, you guys don't have to call me. I will call you. Oh, sure. And then they fix that fucking phone. Do you remember uh, being in a phone booth, making a call with people waiting in line outside the phone booth? Yep. Oh, the worst. People, 
People don't remember, too, that if you were in a phone booth, there was half a chance you were going to get attacked by birds. Yeah. That would happen. <laughs> Kids don't remember getting attacked by birds for some reason. That's, they're living a sweet life, these kids. They, <laughs> they, they almost are. never get murdered by the guy at the hotel. Well, that's not true. They probably do mostly. There's probably There might be more of that. Yeah, that's probably it's true. Less on film. Yeah. <laughs> Although I haven't looked at TikTok in a while. Yeah, maybe the new thing. Murdering <laughs> people at hotels. Hotel murders on TikTok. To like pop music that they didn't get cleared. <laughs> uh, kids, I'll tell you one thing kids don't know about today. Clearance rights. Oh, boy. Apparently no one knows about that every ever generation. <laughs> I know so, that from work. Yep. I have my writers will write sketches and they're like, and then they sing a whole Beatles song. And I'm like, no, no, no. <laughs> We're not paying half a million dollars to make your sketch. Yeah. Like, what? How come? But but it's a little bit funny. <laughs> oh well. <laughs> we yeah, that's true. We'll get chuckles at 1 a.m. Yeah. Or It'll be a great opportunity for Seth to go, you see, we thought that would be fun. He'll get to do that thing. Oh, yeah. The sketch isn't funny, but he'll be funny making fun of it. Oh, great. Well, so we don't really need you then. <laughs> I, that you've had writers say that to you, haven't you? That, like, the thing isn't that funny? But Seth will be great. Yeah. Oh. I call We call them trap doors. <laughs> Like, yeah, you uh, you know, the sketch sucks, then a trap door opens and the sketch disappears. And then Seth goes, oh, that was stupid. <laughs> oh, you fucking idiots. Oh, anyway, funny. we'll be right back with Reese Witherspoon. <laughs> I like Reese Witherspoon perfectly fine. Some people don't. I think she's fine. They love her. I, pair, people she say, good she, ones. huh? does good works yeah some people say she's mean in real life and i always think i bet you that's because she don't like you telling her what to do that yeah. that's what it is a very good chance that yeah you accosted her for a selfie yeah and then like oh she was so rude while she was eating in a restaurant with her family <laughs> yeah <laughs> people are the best uh so then we have a little chorus a turn around oh turn around yeah and i will sing for you a song but I don't know where you've been, and I don't know where you've been, but you've been gone too long, too long. I said you've been gone too long. You've been gone, gone, gone too long. Gone, gone, gone. You've been gone too long. You've been gone, gone, gone too long. Man, now, that, who you, is that? That is uh, my girl. Is it the Kinks? Is it Chili Whack? Is that her name? Yeah. Oh. When I used to go to Al Bums across from the U of A, do you remember that store? I do. Um, they had a wealth of old Chili Whack albums. Oh, wow. A real band from the 70s that was like, I think they were on the verge of getting somewhere and then lost the sands of time. Wow. And I feel like that might be theirs. It might be. The reason I know that song is because, and kids, you can look this up. I will link to it. Is it's a great SCTV sketch where the kids from the preteen kids sing that song. But uh, John Candy has that teenage character who swallows constantly. <laughs> and so he goes, gone, gone, gone. You've been gone so long. You've been... I gone, gone, go so long, gone, gone, go. You went brilliant character. It was from Preteen World. Wow. One and there's a show because it's Canadian that had no idea about music rights. Yep, get crazy. SCTV took so long to end up in syndication because they just did everything. They did whatever they wanted, and then yeah, and then syndication was like, oh no. Yeah. Is this an actual clip from Citizen Kane? Why did you think you could why did you think you could do that? Because we live in a lawless wasteland. Yeah, Lola Heatherton, wonderful, pathetic character from the great Catherine O'Hara. 
I lament that so many people can't get to see her in her full glory because it was constantly her doing songs that someone wrote and deserves to be paid for. <laughs> oh, God, that show was the best. Mm -hmm. We Are Elderly is the name of this podcast now. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't mind rechristening at that. It's just I'll forget to do it. Uh, I did it again, by the way. I, I sent out a link to uh, last week's episode, uh, to episode 57. It's not episode 57. I have since fixed it. Oh, okay. It's 56. I, I do. I love the, the feature of sending it out uh, half an hour before we start the new one. Yes, that is a new thing. I'm doing that on purpose. Great. Because then I've got one in the hopper. So that means if we take an extended break, well, fuck, I haven't seen an episode in a while. We got a couple. We got a couple new subscribers this week, by the way. Oh, great! Now, normally I'm talking about Bruno Mars, but no, real regular folks decided to subscribe. Fantastic! So it was very nice of them, and now I got this little picture. That is a beautifully painted tree. Yep. Falling in the rain. Yep, it's falling <laughs> in the rain. <laughs> you painted trees. Yep. That seems so dumb. <laughs> Not nice and dumb, right? That's a dumb one, right? Good and stupid. <laughs> Originally, I looked up uh, Pretty Lady or In the Woods, <laughs> but it's all like erotica or whatever. I was like, well, I'm not going to do that. I don't know. We, gotta, we don't want to get our license yanked. Yeah. Well, look, if this guy's mad at me because I showed the picture of his painting, although this is a cleared picture, but... But that's fine. But if a lady's mad at me because she's like, why did you, what are you creeps putting up my picture? Then I'd feel bad about that. That'd be a legitimate complaint. Yeah. And that is Lord, a beautifully painted tree. Yep. Really nice. My dad painted that style, by the way. So those okay. sort of, yeah, those brush strokes, that was the way my dad painted. My dad, it looks like an oil painting to me. It's not, and this is a digital painting, but... It looks like an oil painting, and my dad worked in oil. Fantastic. And I loved, one of the things I loved, like if my dad painted a tree like this, he'd paint the tree, and then he'd continue, and I could never do this. I don't have this talent, so there's just certain things that you can do and you can't, but he'd continue painting on the tree, and the tree would become more lush, and the paint would be on the, on the thing thick. It would be a thick yeah. amount of paint on there. I like that. And it gave nice. it. Yeah. And uh, it is a nice memory of my father. And I only have a few of those. So that's one of them is I, I did like watching him paint. You have some of his stuff around. I do. I have a few nice paintings of his. I have a painting of a lady and cats that he painted. <laughs> and it's always funny to me to show people and go, see, you can tell by this painting that my dad was a breast man. <laughs> Because the lady is pretty reasonably endowed. It's kind of funny to me. That's great. And the cats are doing a variety of cat things, but not just one cat thing, which is a credit to his creativity. You must be, because I have a cat, and it only does one cat thing. <laughs> it sleeps it curled up in a ball. Ah, older kitty cat. Very old. Did more oh, stuff before, I'm sure. Yeah. Loves this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh, that's really well, good. Well, hey, we talked a lot about high school in this episode. We did. It leads me to my trivia question. Do you know what year Billy Joel officially graduated from high school? Oh, uh, I'm a, I have a, for, I have a for, for real guess, my first guess is never. <laughs> that is... A good guess and almost correct. <laughs> so, uh, may I ask a question? Yes. G E D? <laughs> yes. Okay. All right. All right. All right. So he was born in 1949. Yeah. So, on the re regular schedule, he would have graduated in what? 67? 67, yeah. I'm going to guess, and then I'll just make one guess. Fair. 
I'm going to go, uh, he did it because he thought, well, Star Wars has come out. 1977. <laughs> 1993. Damn, I was going to go into the 80s or 90s. Wow, 93. Yeah. I think he was like, uh, well, I've recorded my last studio album. <laughs> what to do now? I guess I could finish high school. I wonder why you do that. I mean, it's, there's, you feel like you probably did always have a sense of, I should have done that. Yeah. I bet you also work with a lot of charities and stuff. And um, at some point you're like, I'm encouraging all these kids to finish high school <laughs> in all these speeches I do. Uh, I'm starting to feel like a hypocrite. Yeah. Or I'm bored and my supermodel wife is making fun of me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's funny because he, I watched a video of Billy Joel doing a presentation for his music teacher from high school. Right. And he was so effusive about how important this guy was to him. And he said, I didn't attend a lot of classes, <laughs> but I attended his. Yeah. I praise. <laughs> and the uh, first part, you're like, Billy, you didn't have to say that first part. We know. We know. Yeah. But well, he's a damn smart guy. He's just, that's funny. He's like a lot of, a lot, a lot of cement head guys who grew up that way. They were like perfectly smart, but early on, he didn't make the academic effort. I wonder if, um, he recorded We Didn't Start the Fire. And at the end of the song, he was like, I don't know what any of these things are. <laughs> <laughs> I should go back to high school. Uh, I will close close that topic by just saying I have a friend who's also from Long Island. So when I say he's a little Billy Joelish, he is. Yeah. Uh, one of my very best friends. And he has always just been kind of a jock and kind of a guy guy played professional hockey, which I think is pretty jock-like. Yeah, that's jockey. Um, and always searching for what he wants to do in life. At some point, he got interested in poli-sci. Sure. And, but he got interested in it not to meet girls, not to try to impress anybody. He just got interested in it. And now when I have any conversation with him about politics... Half the conversation is me shutting up and listening to this guy who's suddenly become really smart. Fantastic. Because he put his fucking mind and heart into it. And it's an absolute joy to talk to him. And I, I'm smart enough to go, I don't got nothing to add here. That's the best conversation or the best people to know are the ones where you, you know, you're going to have a better time if you shut up. Yep than if you talk. Yeah, and we go back and forth because if we go see, one of our things is we go see every Marvel movie together. Even now that I've moved, by the way, we met in Bakersfield. <laughs> and when we're talking comic book lore, he shuts up because I'm the expert. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yes, <laughs> politics and real world things, that's him. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you guys did such a good job listening to this show. But I would like to know, and uh, you know what? I'm going to ask Alex. Okay. What are we listening? What are we listening to for next week? Well, I really uh, am enjoying being in this album. Me too. And um, I'm going to go with uh, "Tomorrow Is Today." And I'll just say, first of all, fantastic! I can't wait to talk about it. But I'm going to say, no, it isn't. But <laughs> it's interesting it's an yeah. interesting album in a way that a lot of the albums are not yeah but tomorrow's not today i just want to clarify it's oh just yeah, not. yeah yeah it's just not not yet today's today well we'll see how long that lasts <laughs> <laughs> great great good job everybody and i know there wasn't as not as much nonsense this week I hope there was enough. <laughs>